So, uh, let's talk about drones. We could also talk about unmanned aerial vehicles, small unmanned aerial vehicles, multi-rotors, multi-copters, fixed-wing systems, or vert remotely piloted aircraft systems, or vertical takeoff and landing systems. To make it even worse, we could use abbreviations like UAV, SUAV, RPAS, or VTOL. Most people tend to lose interest as soon as you begin to use acronyms and abbreviations. And that is a major problem if you want to inspire for a new technology. However, many, many people in this emerging drone ecosystems continue to use terrible acronyms and artificial expressions because they are afraid of the term drone. When they think of drones, they think of the automated killer machines of the 21st century, bringing death and destruction to thousands of people far away of their homes. That is true. But there's so much more good power in this technology. We have to unleash that, and we have to regain power over terms, and we have to frame the meaning of words. Throughout my career, I worked at the intersection of communications, sustainability, and communications. And communications made always a difference. So when I talk about drones, I talk about semi-automated, electric flying systems capable of vertical takeoff and landing. Automated, electric, vertical, that is drones. And that is actually the reason why I'm standing here today, because I'm not building drones. I'm not programming drones. I'm not even a talented drone pilot. I am just doing everything I can do to unleash the sustainable power of drones to fast forward three-dimensional mobility, a form of mobility which does not need any kind of infrastructure, which means that we can see in the near future the possibility to transport people and goods without having to seal soil and without having to harm our environment even more. And actually everything you see there except the container one up there and the model down on the right, they are all flying already. And mobility is very important because mobility is a foundation of growth, prosperity, education and employment. So many argue that drones are nothing more and nothing less than electrified helicopters. What you see here is much more than an electrified helicopter. It's a semi-automated passenger drone currently flying in Dubai with up to 18 rotors, which becomes more and more easy to operate. And that means that digitization takes its toll again. That means that it's becoming easier and easier to maintain a formerly very complex capability, uh, like a helicopter pilot, vertical takeoff and landing, that you can, it becomes easy as pie. And flying, actually, and the whole dream about flying, is coming to a near future. I rather accidentally came into this drone ecosystem three years ago. Um, it was I was seeing a drone race. I was seeing some guys running flying drones with video goggles in New Zealand. And I wasn't touched by the potential of flying through woods and feeling like a bird. I was touched by the, that there's much more to it. And I wanted to make people think about the potentials of automated aerial um, mobility. And what did I started to do is just to get some friends and um, family together uh, to talk about these potentials in all the areas and cross-sector and cross-industry. And what started as a um, friends and family event became the first major drone race in Berlin. And I continued to organize events, and I continued to even attract more and more people with uh, up to 100,000 people coming together and discussing the opportunity of drones. So what we did, and what we most successfully did, we connected, fragmented, communities. 
because we realized that everybody was discussing drones and the potential of drones in the different in industries, automotive, air and space, IT and software, energy and mining, and of course in agriculture. And they never talked to each other. And what we basically did is that we brought these people together. We brought them together to talk to each other and to create better ideas faster. We built up a vertical incubator for automation aerial mobility, and that's what we continue this year. We are moving fast forward after we spread out around Europe and the United States that we want to go to Africa because there are so many fragmented drone communities on this continent that we want to bring them all together. So what are actually the potentials of drones in this area of agriculture? It's basically about flying sensors. Drones are nothing more and nothing less but flying tripods. And when we look back in history, and I think this is very amazing, this is a picture of 1912-ish in Germany where somebody wanted to get a better idea of city mapping and planning, and they take aerial photography. And the drones of those days were pigeons. And I thought this is so amazing because there was a time in the history when people were developing cameras for pigeons to get a better idea of what was going on on the ground. So today, we have another need for data. We talk a lot about precision agriculture, and so there is the need for precise data, driven by global uh, population growth, a growing demand for food, and, of course, climate change and salinity, erosion issues. So we need more precise data, and so we want to go up, because from above, we get better information. And there are two kinds of information drones can help, and sensors of drones can provide. Spatial revolution, it's telling you what's happening on the floor and on the ground. And temporal resolution, it's telling you a lot about changes over time. And we have four fields currently where drones actually having a major role already throughout the continent, throughout the world. It's soil and field analysis, it's planting, crop spraying and monitoring, and irrigation and health assessment. For example, this is an area in West Africa, so basically what everybody can do is just now go out to a supermarket and buy a little tiny drone, take some pictures from above, and have a picture like this, and then you can start to make a better planning. That's how actually drones in agriculture started, because people want to see what's happening on huge areas of land. The next one is that you can use it for detection of land management measures, which means you can see, for example, here in Benin, where are file protection strips, are they well maintained, and it takes you to a point where you can easily see it at first hand and you have a rapid information source. You can go with multiple sensors even further in a direction that on huge areas like a forest, it's possible to track down single trees by flying over them to see if there is a disease. This is a forest project from Germany, and there's a drone flying half an hour across a forest, and then it tracks down a single tree with a disease. And that is a rising efficiency all around the time. You have that for fertilization issues, so you don't have to spread fertilizer all around because you see the areas where it's really needed and you have this information at hand. It can be made machine readable and you can, of course, and this is also an issue in South Africa, um, you see, in, get information about vitality in vineyards and it gets, when it gets even worse, if you see that there's a virus infection, you can see where this is happening. And this is some kind of information where it currently, if you walk through a vineyard, it takes a lot of time. And so you can fly 20 minutes over it and you can do it the next day again and you can see if the infection spreads out or if it stays. So this gives you a lot of valuable information at hand. For the farmer, it's getting more and more information on his tables and he can steer it from, his, um, from the side of the field. But what is important about it is that drones are not the driver of the precision farming um, component. They are only a quarter, it's getting the data up in the air. The rest of the process is processing, analyzing and sharing the data. Only a quarter of this is actually the drone issue. So drones are flying tripods in agriculture. They are a great working tool, they are easy to maintain, they are scalable, 
which is very important. They're getting cheaper and cheaper. Compared to satellite images, you can fly under clouds. You have a rapid availability of information, which means you can have it now and you can have it tomorrow and it's easy for everybody because you don't need pylons and it's sustainable because it's totally electrified. So, what's driving me most is the next step. So, what's coming after this flying around sensors? Well, we're going to see everything what we've seen in the last 30 years or 50 years in agricultural aviation. People are going to fly over fields and they're going to send out fertilizer or anything like that with helicopters and airplanes already. So what drones make the difference is they can come closer, they can be more precise. And the next step is going to be even more interesting because this is all about logistics. And this is not a far future because the companies are ready to do it. It's a lack of regulations. It's not the technical capability. It's the major logistics companies are all ready to do things like that by single or swarming. And this is a very important issue because just we had new numbers that in Africa, for example, 40% of food is not even reaching the markets due to a lack of transportation means. So if you have new forms of transportation, and that is not a fantastic future, that is what is rolled out in Rwanda since 2016. You have drone ports designed by Norman Foster, and we're going to see this year a huge challenge at the Victoria Lake, where the test systems will be challenged if they are really capable to transport back and forth autonomously. So there's a lot still to do. We need air traffic management systems, we need regulation, we need safe operation guides, but there's so much good to drones, which is worth to talk about it and to unleash and to inspire and talk about drones. Thank you.